Why this video was because I bought this DGJ 800 off of eBay and this jog wheel doesn't respond to my tap. This one is perfectly okay, um, but this one, it only does the side, it doesn't do the top. So what I'm going to be doing is stripping it down and taking the jog wheel out, see what's inside. Um, and maybe have a look at this fader here because every time I just tap it, it makes a little tiny bit of movement on the PC. So it might be a bit of dust or a bit of uh, grit or dirt inside. So it might need just a bit of a spray out of an air duster. But to take this apart, it consists, looks like it's a ton of screws. So I'm gonna be removing that one there, that one there, then all the ones on the back. And I'm using the towel because I don't want to damage the jog wheels anymore. So I'm using a nice soft surface to uh, work on. Um, this is what I do in my spare time. I take things apart and hopefully fix it. But there is no YouTube videos on how to uh, repair jog wheels. So I thought it will be a good opportunity to uh, try and make a video that helps people out. So without further ado, let's crack on. One point to mention before I flip this over is uh, we need to remove the cross uh, the tempo knob and we need to remove the mechanical jog wheel adjustment. Okay, so now we've got that removed, we turn it over. And there we have it. That's what's inside of a DGJ 800. Um, just notice so far we've got a screw missing and I did hear a screw moving around inside the unit. So it might be somewhere underneath Hell knows, it could be shorting something out, but it looks to me that um, it's taken a bit of a, a knock and a tumble during transit. Um, by the looks of things, this is the deck one. All the wires seem to be in the correct place. So what we'll do is we'll gain access to it and uh, strip it out. I won't film all the screw removals, but I will start recording on the way. Okay, so we've unscrewed all the screws. Basically, only untake the ones that have a little arrow next to it. Everything else, that's probably for where the, the screws from the bottom cover are gonna attach. But only remove the screws that have got this cover on, and then uh, carefully remove all the ribbon cables and other cables, and then once that's done, this will just gently lift off gently he says there we go so that's that out of the way now we need to remove this jog wheel okay by the looks of it there's one two it looks to me like I'm gonna have to remove this whole circuit board here including the headphone uh, ports, just to be able to remove the jog wheel because the circuit boards are all in the way. So I'll do that now. Okay, well, I've removed all the screws around the outside and I've found this loose screw that was missing and it was just uh, underneath the uh, headphone uh, ports. So I'm glad I found that. Now we've got all them screws removed, I do believe you just lift this up and move it out of the way. There's a fair amount of screws if you try to keep them separate because it does appear like there may be some different sizes. But now we've got clean access to the, the jog wheel. So with this, I think we need to remove one, two, three, four screws and uh, I'm hoping it will just lift out. Okay, right, I removed all the screws. There's one, two, three, four, five screws in total. 
So this now just lifts out like that. So there's the jog wheel. Now it looks to me like it's all plastic. There's no metal parts. Now we have a mechanical part which does the, the tightening of the jog wheel. And uh, it looks to me like we've got an optical sensor here uh, with a clear plastic ring that would detect lateral movement in the jog wheel. And then we have this here, which is obviously a PCB of some sort. And this metal thing here, this metal thing here, I believe is the conductor uh, for the top part of the jog wheel. So there should be continuity between this and the top platter, but it's plastic covered, so it won't do absolutely jack. So uh, we're gonna have to undo this and have a look a bit deeper. Okay, so I've removed all the circuit boards and uh, took out the, the main one and this sensor, and I was correct, it's an optical sensor. Um, a good idea is if you see any dust inside there, give it a blast out because if there's dust in there or any type of dirt, it's gonna impede uh, the function of the, the wheel itself. But apart from that, we're not going to be touching any of the mechanical stuff inside. Um, we are just gonna literally be looking at the electrics. Um, it looks to me like these ribbon cables, they just do the display. And this metal tab here is obviously some sort of uh, pick up for the top part of the jog wheel. So let's see what we need to do. Now there is no obvious signs on how to take this apart. There's no clips or anything, but what I have noticed is we've got these four large holes going around the jog wheel. And if you look inside, there isn't, doesn't seem to be anything in there. But if you turn the jog wheel slightly, you will see four screws come into view. There we go. If we take them out, let's see what happens. Okay, so I've removed these four screws and I was able to lift off the top part of the plaza. And uh, quite straight away, I've seen like this uh, metal pickup here. It's made of foam and uh, it's quite flat. It's obviously taken a little bit of hard use in its time. And uh, I was correct in thinking that that metal tab is what uh, gives feedback for the top part. Now, this here is actually quite springy. What we're gonna gently do is just, just lift that up a little bit. Like that, you know. It's obviously taken a lot of wear, so over time it will push down. And uh, the pickup where it's supposed to be attached to that, obviously uh, over time it's, uh, eroded away. So by lifting that up slightly, it's gonna make sure and ensure good connection with it. But that's all we're going to be doing. Obviously these wires, it looks like it come through directly to the screen. The jog wheel inside, we've got like a few rollers and they, they all seem to be intact and none missing. Um, it's all plastic, um, so that's as far as I'm going to go with this. I'm not gonna take it apart any further because I know that the, the tension is okay. There's no issues with it. And uh, it f moves freely with no uh, roughness or feel of grinding or grit inside. But whilst we've got it open, I suppose it'll be a good idea just to give that a wipe over and uh, jog wheel, just remove any dust or whatever and give it a spray out with the uh, air duster. Okay, so I've cleaned everything out. Now we're gonna reassemble it. Now it is important that that, this thing here, lines up with this. If it isn't, it's not gonna do jack. So the best way with how, line up like that and flip it down and move it into place. It might take a little bit of fiddleness. It might be on uh, some sort of a uh, thing. Yeah, you can see there's a tab here. There's tabs and they've got to go in the corresponding places. So 
there we go that's back in there now we've got to get the screws back into here without them actually falling inside and losing them so one trick i have with that is just a little dab of vaseline on the end of the screwdriver that will able to hold on to the screw itself so you can actually uh, do it up without losing it so i'll go ahead and do that now all right when assembling this back together just make sure on this terminal here that there is an actual sound connection there's no dust underneath here so it's like providing like a continuity all the way across the circuit board okay so now we've fixed that we'll just uh reattach this to the board to the actual unit um there's this uh clip at the bottom just have to line it up first before we drop it in there Obviously, if you see it not going in first time, do not force anything because it is, it is only plastic. There we go. So that's on there. So what we'll do now is we'll put the screws back in and then put the outer circuit board back on. Then what I want to do is just try and, if I can, just get to uh, the fader. But I don't really want to, if it involves too much ag, of, removing buttons and whatever i'll leave it okay so uh, we've got this back in now um got the headphone uh, ports back in and uh as i'm going along as i'm removing stuff um crossfader everything just i just give it a blast of canned air just to remove any sort of grime dirt or anything that might be in there but i believe once this is done it's all going to work and everything else fingers crossed Okay, so now this is all screwed down. Um, with regards to these ribbon cables, some have a little clip on that you just lift up gently. I'll show you. Fiddly thing. Anyway, it lifts up and you just gently move the cable into its place, like so, and close the clip. Other cables, like this one, they don't have a clip. You just literally push it in. But with these cables, be ever so gentle with them. They do tear. If you, uh, obviously, if you was to do that, then you're gonna have to try and source another cable from somewhere. Um, but especially with these ones for the, the display on the jog wheel, it would appear that these are really fiddly to get in. There's no clip, they are just pushing, but as they're so dainty and very small, just be very careful with it. But I'm just gonna put it all back in there and uh, then I'm gonna give it a demo try without the cover on, just to make sure everything's working. Right, so we've got the back off, we've got some power into it and uh, I can see that the, the display is on, so the ribbon cables are incorrectly um the display's on this one and i can see that the jog wheel from the top is okay this one here is now okay it's moving and as you can see on my record box it's moving okay uh crossfader <laughs> yeah sliders yeah there is a little tiny bit of movement there i think there is a bit of dust under this fader i'm gonna have to have a look at it and that fader is okay as well and uh the pitch yeah that's all good so as i'm happy that that's working good now i'm so pleased it's such an easy job to do the hardest part actually of working on this uh unit let me just remove the wires because I don't need them anymore. The hardest part of working on this was, in fact, these two ribbon cables. They are a right pain in the ass to put back in there because you can't put them in. They've got to be in straight. And obviously if you was to mess them up, you know, it's bad times, but it takes a bit of an effort to uh, push in, um, but yeah. That's it, all the ribbon cables are back in now. So I'm gonna put the top back on and uh, close this down.
Okay, so that's all complete. Um, install input, let me just change that. There we go, deck two. That's on there, that's it. Make sure the positions are all in the center and they all correspond with uh, record box. You know, yeah, all good. And uh, that one's all okay. And the fader's okay. With the fader, I just blasted it with some air. And now it's uh, perfect. No issues at all. So that is how you uh, take apart a DDJ 800 and uh, remove jog wheel and fix it. I hope that finds it helpful. Many thanks.